Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode we're going to be talking about the Green Bay Packers 2017 running back group, uh, specifically about analytics uh, with the group. And to be honest, guys, it's a really interesting sort of situation for the Green Bay Packers. You know, they went out and they drafted three running backs in the draft. Uh, they also have Ty Montgomery, who's coming back this year. Uh, who never played the running back position? You know, who's always he was a wide receiver at Stanford and then transitioned into being a running back. Um, so it's kind of a tough thing to really discuss, uh, to be honest, in terms of who's going to win the job, who's not going to win the job, because uh, there's a lot of Ty Montgomery specifically is a very ugh, type of case. Like it's really hard to kind of get a good feel for like what his overall upside is. Uh, because he was just never a running back in college. So um, there definitely have been cases like this in like the 70s. But they were with tight ends. You know, they, they were with running backs that became, well, well not running backs, but H-backs, which is a totally different sort of thing nowadays. They're kind of like fullbacks, but they're, you know, they're H-backs specifically. And they were guys who were turned into tight ends. There was a lot of H-backs turned into tight ends in the 70s. Uh, but that's not exactly why receivers being turned into running backs. You know, like it's a totally different thing. Um, so we're going to look at that. We're going to look at Ty Montgomery in terms of what his analytics show. We're going to look at the running backs, and then we're also going to look at uh, what Ty Montgomery did in the NFL too. And we're just going to come to some conclusions about what to expect from this group, uh, what are some positives, what are some negatives, and what are some potential outcomes uh not really making a concrete prediction per day but at least familiarizing you with some of the weaknesses and some of the strengths of this running back core uh when it comes down to it and the analytics you should be familiar with is one market share data market share data is where you take an individual offensive statistic and you divide it by the team statistics so if i'm talking about say passing yardage market share production i'm talking about the passing yardage of an individual player divided by the team passing yardage. Uh, so if a player had a thousand yards of passing yardage on an offense that had 4,000 yards of passing yardage, then that wide receiver had 25% passing yardage market share. You take that number and you compare it to every single wide receiver performance since the 1969 NFL draft class, and then boom, you have a way to compare uh, what players look like when it comes to their production uh, what the all pro players did in terms of their production, the pro ball players, so on and so forth. Uh, so that's basically how that works. Uh, then we're also going to look at athleticism data, specifically the explosive lower body strength score, speed score, and flexibility score. The explosive lower body, body strength score is the short shell, not short shell, but the vertical and the broad jump measured against mass density, which is weight divided by height. Uh, the speed score is a 40 yard dash measured against mass density. And then the flexibility score is a short shell slash recon measured against mass density. Uh, with all that stuff out of the way, at least in terms of terms to familiarize yourself with, uh, let's get to profiling the players. And we'll start with Ty Montgomery first, uh, since he's such a unique uh, sort of discuss. Like, it's very unique, and we'll get into some of the uniqueness of him and what to expect going forward with him. So starting out with Ty Montgomery, I think the first place to have a discussion is about his passing yardage mark share production. Uh, this is what, essentially, we need to look at what he looked like as a wide receiver coming out before we can even talk about what he potentially could be as a running back. Uh, when he was coming out of college as a wide receiver, he had an 82 passing yardage mark share production score. Uh, based on my data, that hit at least the three-time all-pro threshold when it comes to passing yardage mark share production. means he has the potential to be a three-time all-pro player not necessarily that he will be one, but the potential. Uh, and then when you actually get to his athleticism, uh, he had a, a 98.82 explosive lower body strength score, uh, a 81.65 speed score, and 89.58 uh, flexibility score. Uh, so based on his athleticism traits, he pretty much hits all the thresholds you need to hit in terms of a potential pro bowl or all pro player uh, when it comes to his athleticism. Uh, so he, essentially just to break down layman terms, he had the production of a potential all pro pro bowl player, 
and he had the athleticism of a potential opera pro bowl player, but he turned into a running back. So I, to be quite honest with you, I've never seen a case like this since 1969. Um, I, went through the Rolodex, I tried to find a player like this, and I just could not find a player like this. I couldn't find, I've, I've seen quarterbacks turn into wide receivers. I've seen uh, H-backs slash running backs turn into tight ends. I've seen fullbacks turn into tight ends. I've seen uh, defensive tackles turned into fullbacks. I've seen running backs turned into linebackers. I've not seen a wide receiver turned into a running back. So this is a new thing. This is a really new. Uh, it, it, there's, it, it's a very unique case, uh, to say the least. And as a result, it's kind of hard to get a good clue on what his overall upside is. All that I can really say, though, is that every single multiple all-pro and Pro Bowl player was never really a conversion guy. Uh, there's never been a guy who, uh, and, and what I mean by that is, is there's never been a player who became an all-pro Pro Bowl player who switched positions this late in the game, you know, like at the NFL level, switching positions. Uh, it's never really happened. Um, so, but what I can say is he definitely has, uh, you know, good athleticism traits. Um, he his three cone hits at least the threshold it needs to hit in terms of Pro Bowl or All Pro outcomes. I would just say that his overall upside is steered away from the All Pro and Pro Bowl area just because there's just never been a case like this. Like I, I can't just say oh he's going to be a Pro Bowl player when there just has never been this type of case. Like it's so unique. It's such a unique case that it's really hard to say that. And the other thing I can say is based on his production uh, in 2016, he only had a 71.04 market share production score. Uh, and this is him as a running back in Green Bay's offense. And a 71.04 market share production score at the NFL level is essentially a above average score, but not necessarily an elite score. It's a, he essentially was like a top, 30 to 40 back compared to all the other backs uh, in uh, 2016. Um, so, you know, he wasn't a top 10 back. He wasn't a top 20 back. He was just sort of a aver ab above average to most running backs, but still not amazing either. Um, so even his production at the NFL level at, at, at the running back position was just not substantial enough to really say either way about what his overall upside could be. All that I can really say again is he's such a unique case that it's it's really hard to say what he might be uh going forward but i just i just don't know what to do with a guy like this because there's just never been a case like this that i've seen on paper yet uh where you have a guy who does a totally different position at the nfl level all that i do know is that usually most of the guys who do a, a position that they've never ever done in their entire life uh, usually end up being kind of average to maybe a starter as like the highest sort of upside for that type of guy. Then we get to Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams was the first running back they drafted in the in the uh, 2017 class. And based on his production, he had an 83.77 uh, market share production score. It pretty much hits at least the five-time Pro Bowl threshold when it comes to his production. So Based on his production, he had at least a five-time Pro Bowl potential based on his production. But based on his athleticism, and this is the only area where there is a bit of concern uh, with uh, Jamal Williams, is that he only had a 25.54 explosive lower body strength score, a 37.33 speed score, and a 39, uh, not 39, but a, a 14.27 uh, flexibility score for his size. Um, based on my data, 100% uh, of multiple All-Pro or multiple Pro Bowl running backs had at least one athleticism trait that was 79 or higher compared to their peers, uh, which means that they either had an explosive or body strength score that was 79 or higher, a speed score that was 79 or higher, 
or a flexibility score that was 79 or higher. And in Jamal Williams' case, he neither has an explosive or body strength score that is that high, a speed score that is that high, or a flexibility score that is that high. And on top of that, his flexibility score is so low that there has really never been a running back with the flexibility score that low to become a multiple all-pro or pro bowl player um, in, since uh, the 1999 NFL draft class. So that doesn't really help him out. So in many ways, Jamal Williams is someone who definitely has decent production, but he doesn't have the athleticism to match his uh, production. And as a result, I would view Jamal Williams as a backup to spot starter going forward, more so as someone that will become a multiple Pro Bowl or multiple All-Pro running back uh, in the future, let alone starter. It would be very unlikely for Jamal Williams to become a starter uh, in this group of running backs specifically. It would be very unlikely. Uh, even a guy like Ty Montgomery, who's never really played the position before, is just a much more dynamic athlete, and as a result would probably end up starting above Jamal Williams uh, no matter what based on uh, the athleticism of Jamal Williams. Then, of course, we get to the next running back that they drafted in Aaron Jones. Uh, Aaron Jones had a 96.60 total offensive market share production score. Based on my data, he hit the all-pro threshold, the five-time Pro Bowl threshold, and the three-time Pro Bowl threshold uh, in terms of bottom-end thresholds uh, since the 1969 NFL draft class. So he is obviously a much more productive running back than Jamal Williams. And on top of that, the other positive for Aaron Jones is his athleticism. Uh, he had 85.81 explosive lower body strength score, a 55.61 speed score, and 84.46 flexibility score. Uh, he has two athleticism scores that hit 79 or higher. And when it comes to all pro slash pro bowl running backs, you only need one. You only need one athleticism trait that is 79 or higher to become a multiple all pro or pro bowl player. And in Aaron Jones's case, he has two. Uh, his speed score is the only, honestly, his speed score, some people may view this as a weakness. I don't really view it as a weakness uh, because he pretty much has a profile of like a ZBS type of running back. He has explosive traits with flexibility traits, uh, which speaks to his ability to uh, break tackles, get skinny, uh, slip through things easier, and... Um, even though he isn't the fastest guy ever, you don't need to have a speed back when it comes to ZBS schemes. You just need someone who can explode to the hole and uh, break tackles through the hole, uh, if you will, and make fast decisions. So, you know, change of direction, explosiveness are two main qualities that fit ZBS backs the most, and he has both of those qualities. Uh, so in many cases, Aaron Jones... And I'm, I haven't come to the conclusion yet about anything, but Aaron Jones looks the best on paper. He has a very good production uh, coming out of college with a 96.60 overall score. And on top of that, he has great athleticism traits when it comes to explosives and flexibility, which fits a ZBS scheme exceptionally well, too. Um, so he pretty much has all the things that you want that you're looking for when it comes to athleticism uh, and production of a long-term starter to Pro Bowl to All-Pro potential type running back. Uh, so he's probably the best looking running back so far out of the running backs that we've examined up to this point. And last but not least, we have Devontae Mays. Uh, he is the last running back they drafted from Utah State. I honestly view him as a special teamer. Uh, I'm, and, I, and I'll explain why. Uh, based on his production, he had a 44.10 mark share production score. Uh, based on the data since 1969, that doesn't hit the All-Pro threshold in terms of his production, doesn't hit the five-time Pro Bowl threshold in terms of his production, doesn't hit the, the uh, three-time Pro Bowl threshold when it comes to his production. Um, and I tried, I tried everything I could to try to work with Devontae Mays in, term, in terms of his production. I take the best single-season performance, and his best single-season performance was only 44.10 because I do know that he was injured um, in his final year, which kind of threw stuff off. Uh, but even going with his actual healthy season and adjusting for everything, he just came out to 44.10 out of 100. Uh, and then when you come to his athleticism, uh, this is where he looks pretty good. He had a 99.70 explosive lower body strength score, a 93.10 speed score, and a 28.22 flexibility score. Based on his athleticism traits, uh, he, he does not meet the flexibility, the minimum flexibility score for multiple all-pro slash pro bowl player, 
But the reason why I say special teams with him is just look at his speed score, just look at his, his explosive score. Um, special teamers, and I haven't exactly done a study on this yet. This is more so anecdotal, just my experience looking at data. Um, most special teamers that are very, very good tend to be guys who have great explosion numbers, great speed numbers. Um, and not and flexibility is not the biggest deal in the world with these guys as well. Guys like Cordell or Patterson, for example, is a guy that had amazing explosives, amazing speed, but didn't have the best flexibility for his size. Uh, they're, they're, um, uh, Devin Hester, similar sort of situation too. Um, so I would say that Mays, based on his production, doesn't really look like a long-term starter, let alone an all-pro Pro, Pro Bowl player. Uh, but he does have athleticism traits that look to be very much an asset on special teams. Uh, so I wouldn't exactly say that this is like a bust and he won't be useful as much as just a guy that just based on paper looks more so like a special teamer than someone who can become a long-term starter in the Packers backfield. Uh, and of course, we'll see what happens. He may end up being a rotational guy too, but I, but I just don't see... Uh, based on what he looks like on paper, that he'll become uh, a multiple uh, all-pro, let alone multiple Pro Bowl player. He could become a starter. I mean, it's very possible in the right situation he could become a starter, but I don't see it as much in this backfield because of the, the, the competition uh, as well. So, I mean, we'll see what happens, but bottom line is with Devontae Mays, he has great athleticism traits, especially for a special teamer but doesn't quite have the production to prove that he can be a bell cow back at the NFL level in terms of being a long-term starter uh, for multiple seasons consistently. So ultimately, after going over the Green Bay Packers, uh, at least the main candidates to potentially become a starter on this roster at the running back position, I have to say that the guy that I, I see most likely becoming a long-term starter to potential Pro Bowl or to potential All-Pro player on this roster is uh, Aaron Jones, uh, the running back from UTEP. Uh, he has the production indicative of a high-end running back on top of having the athleticism traits of a high-end running back. He's the only player on this roster who, one, has had the experience of being a bell cow back at the college level. Ty Montgomery has not had that experience on top of having all the athleticism traits necessary to become a bell cow back. Uh, let alone uh, a multiple All-Pro Pro Bowl back. Uh, he pretty much has both. He has both the production and the athleticism, which is why I lean towards Aaron Jones in this backfield. However, I can't discount the fact of Ty Montgomery. Ty Montgomery is such a unique case. You know, he was a productive wide receiver at Stanford. You know, he's a very productive wide receiver at Stanford. He has very good athleticism traits. Um, you know, in terms of as a wide receiver, if you just plug him in with the running backs, he tests very well in terms of running backs and ha he hits all the sort of thresholds he needs to hit in terms of three cone, short shawl, all that kind of stuff to be someone with Pro Bowl athleticism traits at the running back position. But the fact that he's never been a running back in terms of his, you know, like he was one last year, but that was like his first year. The fact that he's learning on the job that this is someone who is playing a position that is completely different from what he played in college. There just hasn't been a ton of great outcomes with those types of guys. There's definitely been good outcomes. I mean, like I said, we, we've there's been success stories with taking a, a fullback and turning them into a linebacker, or taking a linebacker and turning them into a fullback, or taking a fullback and turning them into a tight end, or taking a quarterback and turning them into a wide receiver. We've definitely seen stuff like that. However, we have not really seen very many situations uh, where you have a guy like that who switches positions last minute in the NFL and then they become a multiple All-Pro and a Pro Bowl player. That hasn't exactly happened. Um, so I'm not dismissing the fact that Montgomery uh, definitely has the athleticism and he did prove at least in college that he could be a great asset as a wide receiver. And not only that, but on film, a lot of the stuff he was great at in college was things like catching the football after the catch, making people miss, breaking tackles, stuff like that, which is very similar to what you would 
want a running back to do. It's not the exact same thing, but it's similar. At least when it comes to outside runs, there, there's some similarities to those types of traits. However, I would say it's just such a it's just such a type of thing. Like I can't I can't really speak on it that much or form a strong opinion about him uh, because he's such a unique case. Like he could end up being the long term starter for the future with with him uh, because he did show in college he could be a dependable wide receiver. He could definitely be a dependable running back based on his experience. Like there's translatable skills is what I'm trying to say with, with Ty Montgomery. It's just because there's never been a guy quite like him that I've seen. And if there is, leave a comment below. You know, if, if there is a guy that you know of uh, that maybe I missed that is very similar to this guy. Because so far, based on all my data, I haven't found that type of guy yet. Uh, and then when you get to the third guy, at least based on data, I would say I would put my third chips on Devontae Mays. I think in terms of his athleticism traits, he's explosive, he's fast, he doesn't have great uh, production, of course. Uh, there are some reasons for this because he did have injuries, but I do think that there is a lot of positives to You know, the, the explosiveness and the speed, he could be very much like a Chris Ivory-ish type of running back in the right situation. Uh, Chris Ivory, of course, never really became like a multiple Pro Bowl guy or multiple All-Pro guy. Uh, he never was given a shot 100% to become that type of guy. But I do think that there is some potential that Mays could turn into something like that in the future if he just hangs around long enough to become that. And, of course, if he avoids injuries as well. Um, so I'm not dismissing that fact on Mays. Uh, it's just that because of his production being what it is, being a Pro Bowl or All-Pro guy is just a little less likely. I see him more as a special teams asset right now, but he definitely has some – intriguing athleticism traits that could potentially turn him into something interesting you know based on his athleticism traits and then the last guy I would have is Jamal Williams and and despite the fact that he does have good production coming out of college um, his athleticism traits are just not where they need to be in terms of an all-pro guy let alone a pro bowl guy in terms of his athleticism uh, you know, again, uh, below average in explosiveness, below average in terms of speed, and below average in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, you, you don't want backs having that type of look coming out. Um, and he doesn't really even hit the bottom in thresholds for uh, flexibility as well in terms of all pro and pole ball guys. So uh, I, essentially, that is how I would do it. I would put my chips on Aaron Jones based on his production, based on his athleticism, based on the fact that he's had experience at this position, based on the fact that he has athleticism traits fitting of this position. Tom Montgomery would be followed up with that because he's such a unique case, but he does have athleticism traits. He, do, he, has, proven, he has some translatable traits, but there's just a lot of unknowns, and also the fact that it would be much more helpful if he actually had like an amazing season in 2016 when he really just had sort of a middling kind of average season for a running back for the most part um, in terms of starting running backs especially kind of an average season for a starting running back to below average actually for starting running back uh, and then of course Devontae Mays and then uh, Jamal Williams which I know I might get some hate in the comments below about it but I, I don't really I don't know I'm, I'm I've gotten tons of I've gotten death threats already like there's nowhere to go now, you know, like in terms of the comments I've got. Uh, so if you are a lover of Jamal Williams and you think I'm an idiot because I don't think he has a great shot because of his athleticism, then so be it. Uh, but that is how I see it. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any sort of questions about this kind of stuff. Of course, my name is James Coburn. You can find my work at DraftCoburn at WordPress.com in terms of other work I've done in the past. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.